Knife dope. More dope. Come and get your fix. What's up, fuckers? Your boy is back with a fresh batch of dope. Knife dope. That's right, people. The hits don't stop. You know, I had just recently announced my 2023 fiscal report for Sezzle alone, and it was uh, quite reflecting, you know, quite startling at the same time. Uh, but that being said, this was uh, my second to last purchase for the year. That's right. Because even after I found out that goddamn total... I still made another knife purchase. <laughs> man, oh man, your boys got it bad. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about what's in this box. Now, if you see here, I wrote on there, controversial dope. That's because the knife that's in this box is a knife that I decided to purchase after getting one in the pass around group. You see, the knife that is in this box is one that has caused a lot of controversy this year. It has divided a, a bunch of people. Uh, more people have uh, shitted on this knife than quite possibly any other one that I can think of in the, in the, near, in the near past, you know? Um, and so therefore, by the time I got that pass around, you know, pass around version, I almost had my mind made up, you know? I had actually recorded the video and then it wasn't until after recording that video, I didn't upload it, but I decided to carry that knife and something strange happened. I actually fell in love with it. So without further ado, let's get to the dope. Okay, okay, today's unboxing knife is one I told you guys you need to be on the lookout for because she's gonna be in the pocket quite a bit. And that is the SPK Lamia. I think this is a fantastic platform, fantastic design. I love everything about it. I can't think off the top of my head. I can't think of one thing that I'd wanna change. Uh, Maybe I would have loved to have had a finger choil, uh, but either way, it's fucking, uh, it's epic. Probably, you know, and th that was another reason why I wanted to wait to make my fucking end of year videos. Um, because, you know, I knew that this was a possibility with this uh, Lamia. And um, yeah, it's true. The streets didn't lie on this one. Okay, back to what we're talking about today. If I can get this damn box open. This came to Knife Joy. And there's a couple of variables as to why I ended up actually getting this in the first place. And I'm going to touch on all of that. So big shout out to Knife Joy for making this purchase possible. The knife we're talking of taking, or rather the knife that we're taking a look at today is none other than the Benchmade Narrows. Now I'm sure that you have, um, well, I say I'm sure, but I can almost guarantee that this isn't going to be the first time you people have, uh, have seen this knife. And so therefore you may have your predisposed, uh, or rather your, 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 you may have your, your mind made up. You may think you hate it, but I'm going to ask you, did you ever try it? Have you ever held it? You know, because a lot of time these videos, they don't, you know, granted, you don't have the knife physically in front of you. You make a lot of your, uh, your judgment call based on what people tell you about a knife or, or what you see it when you, you know, via, you know, up close and personal through these videos. But I tell you, man, this fucking thing grew on me. And, um, so let's talk about it. Normally the price on this is $522. Um, however, like my partner Charles says, you know, no one's forcing you to buy the knife. If you feel that price is too much, then, you know, by all means, stay, stay clear of it. And I felt that price was too much. Uh, but that being said, Knife Joy has got this little great thing going where if you're part of their Knife Buyers Club, uh, they release certain uh, models monthly at a reduced price. And so therefore I got this for $350. So that made it more, um, more doable for me uh, out the gate. Uh, this knife is about 33% slimmer or thinner than a bug out. You know, I have never been a Benchmade guy. I think I only own two in the collection. I've never owned a bug out. I've tried a bug out and it just didn't do it for me. Uh, but something magical happened with this knife. Uh, we've got deployment, which is going to be your thumb studs. Now, I ain't going to shit you. The spring tension is, you know, 
mushy you know it's it's not you know but th that's for the most part that's all crossbar locks unless you're fucking kaiser you know kaiser has perfected the uh, crossbar lock which they refer to as the clutch lock and i'm still in awe as to why all these companies in particularly benchmade is not doing the same thing uh now that being said though i i have heard that the um the spring mechanism is not omega springs on this uh on this narrows but that i do not know as i have not disassembled it yet overall length on this is 8.02 inches we've got 4.58 inches on the handle got tons of milling going on here on the exterior as well as the interior full titanium build uh love the anodized hardware uh and pocket clip to match that is a deep carry pocket clip which is reversible i even got a lanyard hole for the weirdos Action's good though, you know. Granted, it's it's. It, I say mushy, but actually, this one's nowhere near as mushy as that pass around one uh, was. You know, granted, the pass around one has been finger fucked by every channel from here to California, so I'm sure that's got something to do with it. Now, something that I noticed on the uh, on that pass around version was it, it, it's not the most comfortable knife, you know, due to the narrow uh, platform of the knife. Um, but I, I think there's more positives to it. Uh, we've got. 3.4 inches on this blade here this beautiful drop point blade m390 is the steel uh nice we've got a dual finish we've got a nice stone wash finish there on our bevel and then we've got a uh looks like a nice satin fin or rather a uh what is that like a belt satin stone wash finish almost on the flats nice swedge there on the spine of that blade extremely thin profile i'm actually digging the way that they did these um these nuts here, or rather your, your caps on your crossbar, they kind of go out at an angle uh, because I couldn't imagine them being um, being like we normally have them. You know, they they, they, they wanted to keep it slim profile, so I, I, I get why they did this. Now, you know, something else that my, my partner Charles mentioned to me that, that, that you know, you've got to take into consideration is that, you know, Benchmade for the longest time has really not given us anything new. So, you know, this was a, uh, they took a chance on this model. I'd love to find out exactly how how popular, how successful this model's been. You know, you're going to always have your um, your Benchmade fanboys, uh, just like I'm a Spyderco fanboy, so you're going to always have those loyalists. Um, but at $522, I'm not too sure exactly how many they sold. But at $350, I venture they would sell a lot more. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, 2.41 as far as overall weight. We've got 80 thousandths on our blade stock. So very, very slicey hoe. They did a fantastic job on that plunge grind right there. Plenty of sharpening life. I fucking like it, people. What do you want me to tell you? I fucking like it. I venture to say love it. Uh, there's a thin line between love and hate. And I happened to just cross that line. Let's go ahead and put up some knives for some size comparison. Basically, a little bit of knife flexing. You know how the fuck we do. First up, more American vibes. We're talking about this one. This is another one I told you fuckers get used to because you're going to see a lot of it. And that's going to be the TRM Shadow. And that is that Concord Great Micarta version. So the Narrows is bigger than that. Next up, the Deca. Hogue Deca. Version 2. Don't get it fucked up. So, you know, if you don't want to spend the $522 on a Narrows, uh, granted, you've always got this Deca, which is another fantastic knife to go with. Uh, and that is also smaller than the Narrows. Let's do a couple more, shall we? Now, these next three we're going to be taking a look at are companies that are actually doing better or producing better crossbar locks. Uh, first up is going to be this one coming in from Giant Mouse. Uh, that is the Nazca. Now, Giant Mouse has done what Kaiser has uh, has invented, which is they've given us an adjustable spring tension uh, a la that cr uh, clutch lock. So there you see the narrows up against that. Next up. Another company that immediately followed suit when Kaiser first dropped the uh, the clutch lock technology, and that is Vosteed. Uh, in particular, we're looking at the Vosteed Corsair, which was a fantastic knife this year, and I think they 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 developed this one to be direct competition to the bug out. Uh, so that's basically a Chinese uh, budget bug out. So there you see the narrows up against those. Let's do two mo. God damn it, two mo. Speaking of Kaiser, it wouldn't be right if we didn't put one up here with that clutch lock apparatus. And that is going to be the Kaiser Sheepdog. So the Narrows is also bigger than that. 
Last but certainly not least, another knife with some really slicey vibes. Small, um, small gentleman's carry. We're looking at the legendary Quiet Carry Drift. OG rendition. So there you see the narrows up against that. You know, people, I don't know. 350, I'm okay with. Um, I really anticipate this getting quite a bit of pocket time. You know, this is the perfect knife for me if I'm, uh, I got on a pair of basketball shorts or even a gentleman's carry. It's going to be super slim in the pocket. Uh, it's not going to take up, even though it's, 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 it's kind of big in a sense, at least wide wise, being that it's so narrow, uh, it's not going to take up much real estate. Um, it's super lightweight. You know, I was, you know, what made me pull the trigger on it, like I said, was the pocket time that I did with the uh, pass around version. Um, it was so lightweight that sometimes I didn't even know it was there. Um, so, and then there was a few times that I used it to actually cut some boxes open. It's just, it's enjoyable. I don't know. I'm going to stop apologizing for it because fuck it. It's my knife and I love it. But more importantly, I want to know what you fuckers think. Tell me all about it. Love you, mean it. Until the next time. Cut something. Cut someone. Just don't cut yourself. Stay dangerous, fuckers.